Uh, welcome here to our next webinar here at uh, JFD Brokers. My name is Stefan Friedrichowski, as always, for those kind of uh, webinars. A warm welcome in the name of JFD as well. Uh, today is the 20th uh, of December. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Uh, in four days, we have uh, already Christmas. Uh, so the year um, yeah, goes uh, finally to its end, but... Um, Nevertheless, we have still one webinar, and that webinar has the topic news trading. That's a quite interesting general topic because, as you know, news, uh, yeah, quite often at uh, our stock markets, um, especially some um, those events which uh, have been, for example, yesterday, like uh, the Fed uh, interest rate decision of yesterday. And uh, exactly those kind of news will be the topic of today's webinar because uh, we will focus ourselves especially on um, central bank decisions. And you may think, hey, uh, that's not quite often, isn't it? Uh, yeah, in principle, you're right. I mean, okay, we have Fed uh, decisions about every two months, uh, same for EZB, but... You know that we have forex pairs or currency currencies much more than just the euro or uh, US dollar. Uh, what about Japanese yen? What about um, New Zealand dollar? And those regions have interest rates decisions as well. Maybe up to now you have been too much focused on euro, US dollar or maybe you look to the DAX or S&P 500 uh, when it comes to FED and EZB, but let's have a look to all. And uh, then finally, it will be, uh, you will have much more possibilities um, to have trading events like uh, central bank decisions. Okay. So that's in general about the topic of today. And as always, you see already my contact here, uh, s.friedrichowski at jfdbrokers.com. Um, if you have any questions, any any need for, um, or if you would like to have those Excel sheets, which I will uh, show later, um, no problem. Just send me an email as always, and I make sure that you will get all um, those Excel sheets or other things I will show around here. The slides of today you can already download as we speak. Um, the same as always for my webinars. <clears throat> Before we really go into the topic, oops, not that one. Um, I, you know that I have to show at least one that a risk disclaimer, because we talk about trading, we talk especially about trading setups, trading strategies, and uh, you may... Um, use those strategies, those setups by your own, but as always, uh, it's um, your own responsibility, whatever you do, uh, whatever trades uh, you initiate. Um, yeah, I think that's self-explaining, but at least um, we have to show that once uh, that's simply a legal uh, regulation. Okay. What are the topics of today in more detail? So first, I want to briefly touch news trading in general because I want to, to give um, the topic of today really an envelope uh, of what's generally possible and what's my idea behind of what we, what we are doing here. And uh, therefore, uh, just one slide for news trading in general. Then we go exactly as i mentioned already we go for central bank decisions like yesterday um, the fed decision uh, they decided to increase the interest rate and yeah uh, there have been some movements around the market yeah and uh, not only related to euro us dollar i think more or less every underlying was affected uh, in this case um, but <clears throat> let's see how we deal with that um yeah you know that whenever I talk about a trading strategy, it's not just like, hey, um, uh, use a stop loss of 1% uh, and uh, if the EMA 20 crosses uh, EMA 125, uh, then you should um, yeah, place your order or whatever. It's not 
just a receipt like uh, just the description of the setup, you know that whenever I talk about trading strategies, I want to check them. I want to backtest. I want to simulate exactly what would have happened if I have a certain setup and I would have applied that setup, let's say, for the last 12 years. As always, you know, sometimes we create Excel sheets for that. Sometimes we have um, my C coded uh, results. Uh, same will be today uh, because we will use uh, two small time frames and uh, that we cannot, um, yeah, we cannot manage in Excel. But if we do something like central bank decisions, we need historical data for the decision dates in the past. And when I started the topic, um, that was really um, the first thing. Mm, I have no clue. Uh, thanks to Peter, uh, he found an internet uh, site uh, where I can download exactly those kind of information. But we need those because maybe I can look in my calendar and see still, okay, in June there has been um, an EZ, EZB decision. But what about 2008? What about 2012? So. Uh, we need historical information about news in general. And um, yeah, Peter found one and shared that with me. So therefore, I will share that with you. Uh, there's an opportunity to have all the kind of news um, for download in terms of date, um, what kind of news, and what kind of region is originally um, the news. We'll see that. Then we will optimize our strategy for central bank decisions and we will optimize with respect to three degrees of freedom because we need later something I call once again the reference time. Um, we use the same wording already in the last webinar but and indeed um, the today's strategy is a little bit similar to what we did uh, a month ago and then we need something like what i call here distance and the risk reward ratio so we have three degrees of freedom and we need to, to optimize those for our um, different underlyings and different kind of news finally we create um, as always a portfolio for 29 underlyings and uh, yeah you will see the results are, are quite good uh, i have to mention so news in general so uh, let's let's give a definition here. So, what is called news uh, when it comes to stock markets? News are those events which are known in advance with a date and a time. And at that point in time, some numbers are published, a decision is announced, or whatever. So, you see, the strict definition is something you know in advance. On the other hand, we have those other kind of news, like um, 15th uh, January 2015, um, the Swiss Central Bank uh, released um, the Swiss franc all of a sudden. Um, or um, especially since two years now, we have um, uh, tweets from Donald Trump all of a sudden. And even those tweets might have a big impact on um, stock-related stuff. But those come all of a sudden. And there are even worse cases, like uh, think about 9-11. Um, so the World Trade Center has been hit by airplanes. Those news I do not I cannot cover here within the webinar and I cannot cover those news uh, with any trading strategies with trading strategy but because uh, yeah they come all of a sudden so no no chance uh, what we do here is we look for news which we know in advance with date and time that I've just restrict myself today for central bank decisions is only um, uh, limited resources here. But anyhow, uh, other typical uh, interesting dates would be non-farmers payroll uh, data um, once a month on Friday um, at a given time or even other kind of news like um, IFO information from in Germany and in other countries you have similar numbers for unemployment rates, whatever. 
The good thing is that those news in most cases lead to bigger price moves. So I don't think that in general bigger price moves are good or not good, but at least they appear. They are there. And uh, our question is, how can we slice out a little bit from those moves into a profitable trade? Since the moves are big, we don't have to deal with, uh, let's say, small moves like a few bips. No, uh, no, we have bigger ones. So um, that, that is uh, a little bit easier, you will see. And I want to mention what I do not mean by news trading, uh, what we are doing here today. Uh, because sometimes, for example, yesterday, you might have some expectations you have your own mindset that you think okay i strongly believe for whatever reason that the fed will increase interest rate okay uh how you come to that conclusion it's your turn but even if you have a good story for that then there's the next question okay normally for a specific kind of news, there's a specific answer of the market. But the downside is the market is not uh, that strictly following any kind of rules. So even if you think, okay, if they increase the interest rate, then the effect on uh, Euro, US dollar should be, must be uh, going down, going up, whatever. The remaining question is, how does a mark, market really react? And even if I have that kind of mindset, that kind of expectation for specific news, finally, I have no idea, no clue how the market will react on whatever, whatever I expect. So there are too many question marks. Therefore, that will not be the topic of today uh, to come to some wise conclusions of uh, yeah what will really happen at those news in terms of I know the unemployment rates in advance or I know uh, they will not increase the interest rates or they will double the increase or whatever. No, uh, that's not the topic of today. One general remark as well here uh, when it comes to news trading. Um, yeah. News go more or less hand in hand uh, with spread widening and potential slippage for any trade. That's what you will observe, you have observed already in the past, and um, it's always there, uh, that especially at the point when the news pop up, then we have that spread widening. So opening trades within the first um, seconds or maybe even <clears throat> the first minute of a news, uh, yeah, then you might suffer from spread widening or you might suffer from slippage as well. Can I incorporate that into um, later calculations? Of course, no, at least not slippage. Spread widening in, in principle, yes, and I... Um, did indeed some, let's call it, stress test with those uh, calculations in, by just multiplying all the spreads by a factor of three, for example. But finally, slippage, I cannot simulate. Uh, I have no clue how to do that. <clears throat> Therefore, the only thing I can do is I apply some bigger spreads for that. But finally, still, that might have an uh, impact on our strategy, which we will develop during the webinar. Now let's focus really on interest rate decisions. So what we know um, in terms of frequency that, for example, um, the Fed or the EZB, typically they have decisions every two months. Okay, both in average make already once a month. Um, and later, yeah, we will discuss eight different regions. So that means finally, on average, we have one decision per week. Okay, that's good. Then we don't have that uh, less trades. And the other good thing is whenever it comes for decisions on euro like EZB, we might look to 
seven forex pairs uh, and their reactions. So we get a lot of trades still, not as many as uh, for other strategies, but still finally my portfolio equity uh, is built by 5,000 trades for the last 12 years. So still we have some good statistics on that. Just the two examples for uh, EZB or FED. Um, typically, uh, the EZB decisions is on Thursday, uh, a quarter to two uh, p.m. And there we have the interest rate decision. And especially here, we have um, 45 minutes later at half past two, um, a speech from from the first um, guy, I have no idea how they are really called, but anyhow, you know who I mean, uh, that's Mr. Draghi currently. And same for um, for the Fed, those decisions are typically at 8 p.m. Um, German time, I'm always referring, all times here are always German, even later when it comes to the uh, Excel, Excel sheets, uh, all times are German. Um, then we have those decisions on at eight o'clock, uh, and for example, yesterday. The good thing is um, we can always have a special focus. And for example, if we have an EZB decision, then we can look to everything which is related to euro. What I mean here, therefore, I, I wrote down here euro xxx, uh, and the xxx stands for example, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, Swiss franc, and so on. So we have a total seven pairs we can consider. And we have Fed decisions. Then everything is mainly related to US dollar. But once again, we have um, seven pairs, at least if we follow that list uh, later here. Um, and the only difference is that we, we have sometimes uh, US dollar in the first name. You know that I always call um, Forex pairs uh, in a way that I call the first name, last name. Um, so the first three letters and the second three letters. Um, first name, last name. <clears throat> and uh, the only currency which is always uh, first name is the euro. I'm still wondering that Trump uh, has nothing against that, uh, that sometimes he is not, that the US dollar is not uh, in the first place. But mm, let's see. I should not talk to him about that topic. Um, in general, we look to eight regions. I call it regions because the euro is not a specific country, but all the other ones are um, specific countries like uh, Australian, Canada, Switzerland, and so on. So we have lots of things. Let's first have a look to a typical situation of um, such an um, interest rate decision. And two, two Excel sheets for that uh, as a starting point in order to, to illustrate how we can develop, how we can set up that kind of uh, trading strategy. Within that Excel sheet, I have one graph. That graph is um, the euro US dollar versus time, but not as a price. I have normalized everything to the price, to the close at one second before a quarter to two. Um, so the um, typical time frame of uh, or the typical time for that um, decision announcement. So that therefore we have here exactly where you find my cursor right now, uh, we have definitely a zero. We see some price move looking back from that point in time and you see the price move exactly after uh, the decision has taken place. As that the price is here, or that graph uh, is arranged from data from the 25th of October. So there has been an EZB decision. What you can see here is quite typical. The first thing is after the decision, in this case, um, the price went up, and later 
exactly to the other uh, side down. Good. Let's have a look to really the, the, the time. So there has no there has not been any fast move directly at a quarter to two. And I have not changed uh, summer winter time or um, doing any mistake here. No, definitely no. And even when um, the speech of Draghi has started, that is when my cursor is now, not exactly at that point in time. Maybe a little bit later here, but and maybe all those spikes up and down have been well, related to whatever Draghi has said at that point in time. But finally, you see some bigger move to the south. Looking to just that statistic one example here, uh, one might think already about a trading strategy. The trading strategy, which looks for the reference time, which might be, and you will later see, uh, I will not use exactly that uh, uh, point in time, but let's say for a second here, quarter to two. And let's think about a breakout strategy. Think about we would place two orders, buy stop here, maybe at 0.0%, uh, which would fit exactly to what we have in, within that graph. As always, when you have a statistic one example, you can turn around your numbers in a way that they fit uh, best. That order, the buy stop order, would not have been triggered because uh, we do not hit the 0.2 level here. On the other side, later at about half past three, we would have triggered the sell stop order which is good because still for the rest of the day, price went south. Good. So let's think about a breakout strategy as an input or the basic idea for, of how to trade either B or any interest rate decision. Let's have a look to all the EZB decisions of the last 12 years. I have summarized those in one single graph. Um, unfortunately, that Excel sheet is 18 uh, megabytes uh, big, so uh, need some time sometimes here to, to um, get that uh, picture. I know, it looks a little bit crazy, and indeed it looks crazy, but it is showing us a lot of information here. So how can you interpret it exactly that picture. You see that I have, we have something, let's call it a singularity at that point here. And of course, <clears throat> that is the second before a quarter to two. All the prices have been normalized to exactly that price uh, of that day. So in total, we have uh, here about 100 um, EZB decisions for the last 12 years. Uh, or even, yeah, it's about, uh, around that number. And what we can learn already here is that looking from the decision point backwards, we see mm, not that big moves. Okay, so um, the price in total was more or less calm before the decision. After the decision, we have really some big explosions, at least sometimes. Uh, the prominent example here is uh, heading uh, almost uh, 4%, which is really a lot um, for Forex uh, markets. So, but what we see here as well, even if I don't connect those uh, circles uh, with a line because we still would not uh, see much more than uh, with that uh, cloud of points here. It's not always happening everything in the first few seconds. No, definitely answer no. We have much more time than we think. That's good because that spread widening is prominent more or less only in the first seconds or even first minutes. Later, market is uh, quite doing well. So then, then we don't have problems with that. But we see we have bigger moves exactly after the decision, but not 
only in the first minutes. Sometimes it really takes minutes, even hours, uh, until those moves come yeah, to an end. So that's a good idea, thinking back about uh, what I tell, told you already about how the strategy might look like. So breakout strategy might be a good idea. And so let's follow up on that. Um, but first, let me close that Excel sheet because uh, then I hope I don't get uh, too much problems later with my computer here. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so let's let's come a little bit more close to to the setup we want to introduce here and want to investigate later. So let's be more general, not too specific. Therefore, let's start with a certain reference time. And I'm 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 telling the story, uh, yeah, that that more abstract because later I want to apply the same story not for for uh, EZB for New Zealand for Japanese uh, Japan. Um, so therefore, I just call it reference time because I have no clue uh, out of my head uh, when those decisions take place. Therefore, we look for a specific reference time for a specific region. So, for example, EZB, we might think about a quarter to two, but later it will turn out that we use a different time. But anyhow, so because at the reference time, we place our orders, our two orders, we place a buy stop order and a sell stop order. And what do I mean with uh, they, they uh, are placed at a reference time? So we look at that point in time to the price. And then we apply a certain distance um, to that price. And the price plus the distance, we place the buy stop order. The price minus that distance, we place our sell stop order. And the distance here is measured in percent. Um, because still, even at Forex, uh, we might have uh, Euro, US dollar at uh, parity, so about one. A uh, couple of years ago, it has been at 1.6. Um, so therefore, it's always better not to measure uh, any distance absolute. Therefore, it's better to do it um, in percent. So the reference time and the price at the reference time plus distance and minus distance is exactly placing our buy stop and sell stop order. The two orders we define as OCO, so one cancels the other. What does it mean in general? It means that we have an order range, or so the, or the two orders, they create a range, exactly two times, um, uh, so twice the distance. So that is the upper and the lower end. And therefore, I mentioned already, the strategy is quite similar to breakout strategies. When we think about classical breakout strategies, normally we have two reference time, reference time, so starting time and an end time. And between those two point in times, point in time, we measure the price range. In this case, we do it exactly the other way around. We just have a reference time and then a certain distance, and then we are finished with our range. Then we need a definition for our stop loss. And uh, in order to not have another degree of freedom, I simply um, place my stop loss exactly always on the opposite side. So that's quite easy. We need to take profit for the trade, or at least I want to have uh, one here. Um, and therefore, we, we take a fixed risk reward ratio, and then we can calculate the take profit level on both sides. And finally, we need a rule, mm, how long um, should that trade survive? And if, it is, if the trade is triggered and we do not hit stop loss, uh, nor uh, neither um, stop loss nor take profit, then just uh, as a definition, I go for 5 to 11 and I close all the trades whenever there are trades still open, so before swaps. So that's the reason uh, for that uh, point in time. Finally, what does it mean? We have three degrees of freedom. That's not that many, that's good, <clears throat> but 
still we have three reference time, distant and risk reward ratio. That's all we need um, for that strategy. And to make it a little bit more um, characteristic, let's at least go once uh, for a chart here. Uh, and um, I just want to go for a US dollar uh, chart and uh, and maybe still we can have a look to what happened yesterday. Uh, let me see whether we, that will still fit here. Uh, but first, let me remove um, all the lines here. And only will take a few seconds, then uh, all the lines are deleted, hopefully. Give me one second more. So, let's it. For whatever reason, it doesn't work. Hmm. Yesterday in the German webinar, I have been able to do it, but today, no, I have it. Good. Sorry for the delay. So. Let's have a view on um, yesterday, yesterday's decisions. Maybe I can still zoom out a little bit. So, no, that's uh, too much. So let me see. That's it was it about um, because that's JFT time. So it is. I can. <laughs> I have it quite easy. Uh, you see the volume here. Um, that was uh, uh, at the point in time. Yeah, we have the decision. Let's first uh, have. Oh no, the, the, the reaction was a little bit later. So um, let's go here. Here we are. That's the last candle before uh, the interest rate decision. And um, so I need to zoom. There we are. So here we can place or think about how to place our orders. Um, why is that always coming back? I switch that off. So now we are. So here we could place our orders and uh, let's first uh, have a line here. So at the reference time and then we would place our two orders and let's think about maybe something like 0.2%. Um, that would be around here. So I will not calculate it uh, precisely. So it would be, um, uh, that's, uh, Okay, let's go for 1.5%. Then this order would be around here. That would be the buy stop order. And we would have another one on the uh, downside here. Those two orders would be in the market. Um, so it's not uh, mathematically correct, but um, just to illustrate what happened. And the yesterday decision would have been quite easy. Um, you see, price went down. And that's all. We would have been triggered with a sell stop order. Um, that's fine. And later, um, in our case, so it's about here. We would have, okay, there we are. I will go for horizontal as well. That is the five minutes to uh, 11. We would have closed the order. So everything would have went fine. Okay, you know, statistics one. Um, that's no proof of the concept, but that illustrates a little bit more um, in the chart how the strategy would run. For yesterday, I would expect or would have expected here some slippage because it was already in the first uh, minutes. Um, and maybe I can uh, have a closer look. Let me see whether that works. Um, whether it was really in the first minute. No, it was not in the first minute. So now here you can see um, that uh, 
for five minutes everything is still calm and then we have uh, that move okay anyhow you see how the strategy in general should work buy stop sell stop one cancels the other so when the order has been triggered here we would have deleted uh, our buy stop order and in this case here um, um, we would not have um, hit any take profit because that would be more far away at least for most of my my parameters um, but we will see the parameters in a second and then we would close would have closed that trade um, five minutes to 11 according to the rules you may use a little bit different words no question but at least those are my uh, rules so that's at least yesterday uh, everything went perfect but now let's go back to what we can calculate so and now i want to simulate the results for historical data and as i mentioned first thing is what we need okay we need data but uh, not only the price data and you know how to get those uh, we have touched that topic uh, several times um, during our webinars how to get data i will use m5 data here um, in order to be at least not um, yeah, well, precise enough. Let's call, it, let's call it that way. Uh, so the price data is no big deal to get those. Um, but now we need the other link here, and the other link I have opened already uh, here. Um, okay, the website is in German. I have no idea whether they can whether you can change to English, but I think most of the relevant information you will get even uh, if you are not. Uh, able to read German, but anyhow. So normally you see all the, the, the decisions for a single day. Um, that's today, and yeah, it's quite a lot of different uh, kind of um, news. But we can apply a filter, and that filter is, for example, meant one thing. You can select specific regions like you are only interested in new zealand and maybe in us uh, usa so let me go only for usa uh, for an example and um, then so so you can select the regions and then we have you can select a period of uh, history so if you want to go uh, further down uh, the history, so like uh, 2007, for example, and um, then maybe until here, then you can apply that filter and um, then now it works. And now you get a list with all the dates um, according to your filter. What I unfortunately forgot I uh, go back to my filter because I only want to have interest rates decisions that is zinsen that is uh, interest rate um, and that means if I press that button I only get uh, all the Fed decisions so now I have a list here with all the Fed um, decision dates and times um, and even some numbers about uh, what has been the decision and what has been the expected value before, uh, even those data you can have here. Now the question is how can I get those data into um, Excel or any uh, CSV file? Answer, I know here there's no real uh, download button, but you can simply mark that and then copy it to uh, Excel and uh, as always it works better not with the original Excel it works that copy paste works better with LibreOffice <clears throat> and then you have uh, those numbers in LibreOffice and then you can transform those and then you have finally all the interest rate decision dates and time in one single table so finally if you do that and uh, I have done it already Finally, it looks like, no, not this one, um, so this is the equity. And then you have a list, in my case, this list, I have transformed the list into that way here. Uh, let me enlarge it, zoom out here a little bit. Um, quite a simple list with a date, 
the time and the relevant region. So, to, so to say, the country. Uh, because later I will use exactly that symbol for uh, comparison uh, to my my uh, forex pair under interest, and then uh, I use exactly those things here. That list is you can have that as well. Um, then you have a list of all decision um, dates uh, for eight different regions, um, and those go back to 2006. So um, it's quite a huge number. So we have uh, since 2006, we have 800 uh, interest rate decision um, dates. Hmm. So it's not that few. So we get a lot of trades now. That's a one step. We get the data for interest rate decisions. And the next step is we need to simulate our idea. And that we do on an M5 time frame. And we have always to, to investigate two cases for a single pair. Uh, for example, if we are interested in the euro US dollar, then we should do it twice. One time we go for all the decision dates of EZB and second uh, time we, we go for all Fed decisions because you know the the name Euro US dollar is already um, telling us hey both regions are of interest definitely and therefore we investigate Euro US dollar once for all the dates of EZB and once for all the dates of Fed and that we do independently because of course the reference time should not be the same as the decision time is already telling us. Uh, one is at around 2 p.m. and the other is around 8 p.m. So we need two reference times, definitely. And maybe we need even two different sets for distances or for risk-reward ratios. The next process I cannot show in Excel because uh, we have too much data. So therefore, just um, let's have a quick view uh, how I do it uh, with my C um, my C programs. Um, they are already um, done, and let me simply go in my history. So now, now I I start one program. I give it some parameters. Uh, in my case, I'm telling uh, that program, okay, uh, please go for Euro US dollar. Please um, compare with uh, FED uh, dates and uh, use a distance of 0.3, use a risk reward ratio of um, 3, and go for uh, the reference time of um, 8 o'clock. Uh, that are those, those numbers here. I don't know, they are quite small. Maybe you can't see them. So I. Um, I start that program, it takes a couple of uh, seconds and then I'm done. And for all the last 12 years, uh, price data have been loaded, decision dates have been loaded and the strategy has been applied to those data. Um, so it goes quite fast. And then I get an equity for Euro, US dollar um, with that reference time, that reference, uh, that distance, and that risk reward ratio. And then you can finally uh, get something like an equity here. I have to mention that uh, all my trades are with a risk of 50 euro. So um, the lot size or the position size for the trade is always calculated with those 50 euros. Okay, that's the equity with that set of parameters. Can we improve it? Answer yes. Um, let's go for another example. Let's have a slightly different um, reference time. Let's go a little bit more before that eight o'clock, and let's do the calculation once again. And then you can see a change. Um, and here we are. Oh, I have first to close the old one and then open 
the results once again and then here we go so with a slightly other set of parameters we get already a little bit better results um, of course it's not the perfect equity for one single underlying for one single decision but we can do more let's have a view on what happens at EZB and let's have a look for what we, what we get out of EZB decision rates decisions and uh, then we get for example that um, equity the funny thing is I use the same distance but my risk reward ratio is now different uh, my risk reward ratio is not now not three now it's um, just one and uh, still my risk per trade is uh, 50 euros and then I get an equity which looks like this one that looks already better but as you know the best you can do if you have something or if you have a strategy like this build a portfolio what we need is we definitely need much more underlyings and we as you know we can always uh, use any underlying twice one for the first name of the um, data uh, for, for the forex pair like euro so we look for ezb and one for the second name or the last name so for us dollar meaning for the fed decisions so we have in total <clears throat> much more possibilities to trade that and then we can can combine all the results to a single equity uh, let me first summarize what I have done so I have looked for the eight different regions and those different um, interest rate decisions so with that single list where I have all the ones uh, decisions in one list <coughs> so I have in total 28 forex pairs translate because I can use every forex pair twice um, I go for 56 and then I added uh, gold as well but that only one time because uh, there are no specific decisions for the symbol um, uh, XAU so anyhow that's a little bit funny but and then we optimize for reference time uh, for the order placement for the distance and um, for the risk reward ratio and then we have a final result that final result if you combine all the equities of um, those 57 um, different sub equities we get exactly this one this consists out of 5000 trades um, and I will show you the list of trades uh, in a second and that equity is really looking great within my slides here um, I go already here one one step further I know you might not read or you may not be able to read that uh, table I have the same table in my Excel sheet and uh, then I can zoom better into that table and you can better read if you have interest in that Excel sheet I will send it of course uh, to you so let's go back to our equity uh, and that we have how many trades um, that's a little bit more than 5,000 trades for the different underlyings, different decisions. Um, so looks quite impressive. 50 euro has been the risk per trade. Um, looking for the overall growth and the, um, the account size which would be needed for such a strategy, which is just a little bit above 5,000 euro. And um, there are the monthly growth, the monthly. Um, would be 7% so that's a really impressive number but question do I expect the same going on or could we transform those results in real life trades I think not to that extent but if it finally in life trades goes only for half of those profits we have still uh, quite an impressive strategy with 3.5 earnings um, per month okay 
so there's uh, still um, enough. So we, we can suffer from slippage and suffer from spread widening. It will not ruin us. And I've done that kind of simulation already um, directly, as I mentioned, without slippage, but by um, with uh, spreads, which are just three times higher than normally. And that uh, loses here about 15,000 euro in total, but still we have a quite profit profitable strategy. So another uh, amazing thing about that equity is that it flattens a little bit since 2017 and even a little bit before. We can speculate uh, about that, but I have no real clue. Maybe it has to do with no changes for a long time with interest rates. Um, I have no real clue, but that's what I see here. Within that Excel sheet, if you like, and um, oh, that's I have marked from yesterday, uh, then you will find all the details for the individual strategies. Uh, you have that reference minute um, and I translate my, my minutes since midnight already in, into a readable um, time, like uh, half uh, a quarter to a quarter past uh, six, uh, for example. That would be the reference time for FED decisions uh, with a distance of 0 0.5, uh, 0.56, and uh, risk reward ratio uh, of 1.3 about. And there you have that list for all the parameters you need if you want to use a strategy like this. Uh, additional information here, you can see how many interest rate uh, decisions we have for a specific region. And you see that region um, in that column here. So those are the ones um, that you have to know. Okay, uh, if I want to follow a strategy for Euro, uh, New Zealand dollar, and uh, I use the uh, EZB decisions, therefore we have a Euro here, then in the past we have had uh, 125 um, decisions during the last 12 years, and traded decisions has been 121. What what about those missing four? Hmm. They did not, um, yeah, uh, leave uh, or break out from that range, and therefore we have no trade. So we have all the parameters for the um, 57 setups um, in total. And I think, yeah, the uh, equity for that strategy is telling its own story. So that's about news trading. News trading related to interest rate uh, to central bank decisions. Of course, we can extend that for, and my next uh my next thing to investigate would be the uh, NFP data, uh, because then yeah, we have once a month, um, uh, one Friday, I think it's the first Friday of a month, so 12 dates per year would mean mm, for 10 years we have 120 uh, decisions. We can look for a strategy for that as well. And then we can even further increase that portfolio about news trading with those known news. As I mentioned, we can only trade um, in with that kind of strategy news we know in advance, because then we can apply those rules and uh, we can even set up new rules for other news. But those, what I did here during that webinar, have been for in of central bank decisions. That this strategy is profitable. Okay, you have seen, and the approach is really quite simple. We use a breakout approach for uh, getting those results, but we need uh, individual parameters for that, what I call the reference time, uh, the distance for order placement, and the risk reward ratio. The good thing is that each Forex pair can be traded twice in a sense, okay, uh, Euro US dollar, you remember once for EZB decisions and once for Fed decisions. And therefore, we have quite a lot of trades if we go to the, uh, through their complete list of uh, Forex pairs. Okay, 
That's for today. That's for this uh, webinar about news trading. But before I really close the webinar, uh, of course, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Um, it's only a couple of um, uh, days now, and then we will have Christmas already, all of a sudden, as every year. And um, yeah, I want, uh, I wish you a good start into the new year, 2019. Let's see what we can do for trading um, within that year. It will be interesting, and hopefully you enjoyed all the kind of webinars this year. And uh, stay tuned for those which will be next year. Have a good time and have a good evening. Bye-bye.